Hey guys, in this tutorial we're going to take a look at two different methods for using the morph box. Alright, so we're going to start the way I do a lot of these tutorials. We're going to bring in two curves. I'm going to reference those curves in. And we're going to rebuild those curves. And then we're going to loft them. Alright, once we've lofted those, we are going to use a divide domain squared. And we're going to plug in a number for our u and v. And then we're going to use a sub. Actually, no, we don't need to use a subsurface, but I will use one anyway, just so that you can see what's going on. And so there's our surface, there's our domain, our subset domain. And then I'll just turn these off. And so there we go. Got our surface, got our divided surface. Now the way the um the way the morph box works, or the box morph, sorry, is okay, so you need a morph, you need a piece of geometry that you're gonna plug into there. Um you need, and you also need some sort of twisted box. That twisted box could come in the shape of a surface box, or a blend box, or a bounding box. Basically, this uh, a box piece of geometry is a special kind of geometry that works with it whenever you're morphing anything. So. In order to set this morph box, we need... Okay, so we could use a base surface to create a surface box, and the surface domain, which we get from our divide domain squared. And this will give us a whole lot of boxes along the surface, which is pretty neat. And then, okay, we actually... Well, we need some sort of piece of geometry. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a rectangle. Um, and I'm going to I'm going to extrude that rectangle to a point. And that point is going to be based on an, a construct point with a particular z height. All right, so there's my box. I'm going to create a bounding box around that piece of geometry. And so the way this morph box works is it wants a piece of geometry, which is our extrusion. It wants a reference box, which is our bounding box. And it wants a target box, which in this case is our surface box. So you can see that what that does is it creates a whole lot of well, it basically repeats our geometry along this surface in a really neat way. Um, we've also got control, actually, yes, so we don't really need any sort of um, height to this other than just a, like, there's no point in plugging a slider in because it's really not going to do anything at the moment. Um, so all we need is just a Z vector to go into here. There we go. Um, the height variable is going to be set over here. And I'll just give that a bit more oomph. Plug it up to 100. And there we go. Actually, that's quite a bit much. Alright, so now we could. Uh, mess around with these surface boxes, do whatever we want. We could, for instance, do something like if we took the uh, not the mesh area, the just the area of each and every one of these surfaces. Um, and then we could we could use those for the heights of our boxes. If we were to multiply them by 
certain number. I want them to be quite small, so I'll bring them down here somewhere. And there we go, we're getting a couple, oh, we're getting a bit of variation in our box heights. It's doing something a bit interesting. Um, we could also feed in an attract point to here if we wanted. So I could take the distance between, let's see, my center point here and an evaluate surface point, which would evaluate this surface at a UV coordinate, which would, be, which would come from this multi-dimensional slider. And so the distance, we would also have to multiply that. We might want something a bit larger. And so there we go, we're getting this nice sort of repelling. All right, so that's that's one way to use the uh, the box morph. Um, but a method that I prefer, so slightly different to this, is okay. We'll still use the surface, but instead of using the surface box, actually, instead of using all of this, what we're going to do is we're going to turn this into a mesh. So we're going to mesh this surface. And what it's going to give us is a whole lot of mesh faces. I'm going to plug my slider into here, set some arbitrary value, and we'll bump it up to some number. Now what I'm also going to do is I'm going to use my WB offset, my Weaver Bird offset mesh. We're going to offset each of these mesh faces um, sorry, each of the mesh vertices. So in order to mess around with this, what we can do is we can we can get a deconstruct mesh component, um, and each of these vertices we could tie them to our attractor point, which is over here. Actually, I'll make a copy of these three components and. I'll plug my vertices into here and so my distance actually I need these as well so my offset distance is going to be like this all right um, you know what I might just mess around with this a little bit Maybe I want it looking something like that. All right, and so with this now, we can create our own custom twisted box, which I think is a bit cooler. So we're gonna take, let's see, in order to do this, we need to explode these two meshes. And then we are going to uh, list item out the points from each of these faces by deconstructing the mesh. And then we'll plug our list item in and add one, two, three more values. Do the same thing for our other mesh. And then we basically just need to plug these all in. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H. And there we go. So you might be wondering why I did this. And uh, well, the advantage to this is that with the surface box, you'll see that the edges of our box don't necessarily line up because all we plug in is a height value for that box, meaning you're going to get some parity between this, or uh, between sort of the height of this box here and this box here. But with this twisted box, we're defining a more sort of uniform, um, how should we say, um, I guess there's, well, there's no parity because we're basing it on the mesh itself. 
And so now we can instead plug this twisted box in. And I'm just going to take these divisions down because they are quite a lot. So I'll plug that in. And then I will. Oh, whoops. Okay, I guess I'll bake that. And there we go. Now, what else could we do with this? We could do. Um, let me just get rid of that. Now, before we. Oh, instead of plugging this extrusion in, I might want to do. I want, might want to mesh this. So I'm going to do a simple mesh. And that should give me a mesh with four faces. And then I can plug this into my geometry instead. Now, the reason I, I, I tend to prefer to use mesh geometry instead of brick geometry, because especially for something like uh, like doing a box morph, if you're using brick geometry, it can get pretty complicated pretty quickly. And so I'd, I'd try to avoid it as much as I can. But now that I've created all of these uh, pieces of geometry on the surface. I could flatten this and then use a WB join component and then I would be able to subdivide this using my Catmull Clark. And what we're going to get oops, not 10, we only want to go up to 3 divisions what we're going to get is this really nice kind of weird dimply surface. There we go. And that's based off of the surface that we created. And I think that looks pretty neat. Um, let's see, what else was I going to say? Um, um, um. Oh, yes, yeah, so I guess I should also sort of just show what um, another benefit to using this, um, this twisted box method here. If we were to, let's say we, um, so took my extrusion and maybe I'll mirror it through the XY plane at my at the height of my box. So mirroring it through this plane, that's the geometry I'm mirroring, and then I'm meshing this geometry. And so because we've lined all of these um because we've lined all of these edges of the boxes up, that means that all of our geometry is going to line up in here. If I were to plug these surface boxes in, you're going to see we are going to get a... Oops, sorry, I plugged it into the wrong thing. If I plug it in here, they're all going to be slightly offset and they're not going to match up properly. So this is why I prefer to use the twisted box method. It gives you a nice sort of alignment of geometry and it, uh, yeah, it's a pretty good method. Now what we could also do is we could, uh, we could plug in a couple of different shapes into here if we wanted. So I could do a simple mesh of this mirror. I could also do a simple mesh of the original geometry and then plug those both in. Um, and then flatten that and I could uh, oops. Let me see, I could weave these components together. Oops, that's item one, that's item two. I'm going to want to mirror this, not about this point, just about the, uh, the origin. And then I'm going to repeat my data until we reach the list length of, let's see, oh, it should be of this face explode. And then we'll plug that in there. And 
And what we now get is this nice alternating pattern. If I uh, switch up these subdivisions, there we go. We'll get this weird sort of flipping back and forth sort of shape. Looks a little bit something like this. Okay, and obviously it would look like I need to flip one of these meshes. So I'll just do a mesh flip in here somewhere. Flip that around, plug that in. And there we go. So that's uh, that's one of the things we can do using morph boxes. Have fun with them.